How to create a nozzle image hose effect in Photoshop. Normally associated with Painter, you can create very similar using place along path feature. That's the source material. There's the end result. There's a few examples. So how to create it? Well, first thing to do, create a source for it. File and new. I'm going to create a very small document, something 300 by 300, transparent background, click create. And I'm going to use the brush tool. And it's going to be in grey. The reason for grey, because of the colour randomization works really best with grey. So I'm going to use 20 pixels, something very small, and one of the general brushes. But you can use any other shape as well, any other brush, but I'm just going to use that very basic design. Just quickly draw something. A couple of lines, a couple of wiggles, zigzag, whatever. So once you've done that, what you can do is you can go to the Edit menu and Define Pattern. And that's it, you've got your source material now. Like I say, you could use anything else to create that design. You could use all kinds of brushes, you could apply effects, all those sort of things. But I want something fairly simple. So File and New, create something new now. And 300 for the resolution, 16-bit. Create a new layer for the design. Makes it easier to remove at a later point if you wish. Turn it into a smart object, apply styles, etc. Layer menu and new layer. And now you need a path. Now you could use a pen tool, but I'm going to use the curvature tool. You could use other things as well. You could use circles, rectangles. They all need the path option to be set. So select that. And you see path there. Now go and click on the document and create your path. It doesn't have to be a very complex path. Keep it fairly in the centre. Don't go too close to the edge because it might go off the edge. And I don't particularly like that. I think that just ends up crazy now. And if you create something that's too big, you can always undo it. Now you're on a new layer. You've got your path. What you can now do, and that's window and layers and pass. That's the key ones there. You can now go to the edit menu. And fill. And you've got pattern for the contents and select the design you just created, that circle. And make certain the script is on. So let's click that. Place along path. Click OK. Now the preview doesn't look anything like the path at all. Now go for a fairly small scale. Set the spacing to be very crunched in, so it's minus 300 or minus 4. Bit of experimentation is really required for this. You can also set the scale. Scale pro progression. Now I've gone for 100.5. I just want it to increase slightly. Don't let it go massive. So if you put 101, you start to find it suddenly goes massive. And also set the colour randomness to a fairly high value. Click OK and try it. An experiment, you can always undo. So you've got that design. So if you had gone for 101, you might suddenly found the whole screen full. I don't want that. I just wanted a very small design. But you can always undo it at any point. Edit menu and undo. Click OK again and try it again. Just change something. If you're not happy with it, maybe change it. Instead of 5, put 8. 100.8. I know it's very subtle. The slider really makes no sense with that one. I always use the edit field to change that. So you've got your design there. And now it's applied to a layer, which is really useful. Because what you can do with it, you can apply layer effects or layer styles. 
and you've got that lovely design going from small to large. It is a pity there is no nozzle feature in Photoshop. I'm not certain why they never added one. Many applications have it, Painter being an obvious example, as well as picture tubes in PaintShop Pro. So what you can do then, you've got layer style. So layer menu, layer style and bevel. And I just like the bevel because it just creates that like three-dimensional feature to it. And you can also add a shadow. You might not want a shadow, to be honest. I think sometimes it makes the picture fairly dark, the image fairly dark. So up to you on that one. I think when I did all the designs, I was looking at thinking, you know what, it would have been better without the shadow. But each their own. But you can add a shadow. You can also add other things as well. Glows, strokes. You can change the contour for the shadow as well as the bevel. Create all kinds of designs with this layer styles. You can, of course, what you can also do, you can go to the styles panel and apply style there. Change the angle. Once you're happy with that, click OK. And there you've got your design. Quite a lovely looking image hose effect. Now there are tools you can get, plugins you can get that can probably mimic this. But this is a way of doing it in Photoshop. So turn that into a smart object. So layer menu, smart objects and convert. Now what you can do, you can actually just duplicate it. So you can hold down the Alt or Option key and duplicate and drag to duplicate it. That's a smart object. You can rotate it. You can resize it within limits. Rotate it around, drag it. Now you could also use that design, the one that was the initial design. You could use that as a source for a pattern. So remove the background. And then just apply that. So just select it, edit and define pattern. And then use like random fill. And you could do similar sort of thing as that. But it's a very quick and easy way since I'm only going to create five or six items there. You can also warp the design. Just use the edit menu, transform and warp. The only trouble with adding shadows to your design is that every time you apply transformations, rotations, etc., the shadows go all over the place. Just makes the image a lot more darker. So you can repeat it numerous times just by holding down the Alt or Option key. Or use the Layer menu and duplicate. And what you can then do, of course, you can select all of those shapes as well and convert them all into a single smart object. So like I say, you can just select one of them, Edit Menu and Warp, Transform and Warp. Then just go to those points there and just drag that around and distort it in all kinds of ways. Drag it that way, this way. You can also right click and use the split warp cross wire. So all kinds of weird and wonderful shapes can be generated using this approach. Press return. And again, you can duplicate that as well. You can also select one of those designs and then copy it into a new document and maybe use it as a source for a new brush. Simply go to the Edit menu and Define Brush. You don't have to keep them all as separate designs. What you can do, you can merge them all using the layer menu. You can also merge them into a, a smart object. Select them all via the layers panel.
and then go to the layer menu and smart objects and convert to a smart object. And once you've done that, you can then duplicate that. Resize it. Apply transformations to that as well. Maybe liquefy it. You can just drag that a couple of times, holding the alt or option key down and drag in. And then you can also go to filters, maybe use wave, you can use stylize, oil paint. You can smear all that design slightly in. So set the stylization, cleanliness quite high, click OK. And then you can duplicate that as well. Right, multiple copies. So you can build up a very complex design. And that's all just created from a simple circle as a source design. I've used a circle in this example, but you could easily use weaves, waves, dots, spots, triangles, rectangles, images, gradients, and many, many more designs. All you need to do is experiment with the settings within the edit menu and fill and pattern commands, as well as varying the path used. I hope you found this tutorial of interest. Please subscribe to the Graphic Extras channel, always adding new tutorials about Photoshop, Illustrator, Painter, as well as many other applications. Please subscribe to the Graphic Extras channel. Also, please add a comment or two. It's always appreciated. A dislike or like. Thank you much.